Hi everyone, I'm Mark Dunham, Executive Chef for the Atherton Hotel and Ranchers Club. Today we're standing in the Basic Food Lab at the Hotel and Restaurant Administration building here on Oklahoma State University campus. Brought you here today so we could talk potatoes. Now all three potato recipes that we'll make today are available at the Ranchers Club. And all these potatoes are something you can do at home. They're very easy to do. What we're looking at today are different types of potatoes that can go in this, into the same recipe. And basically what we have here today are a waxy variety of potato, which are these new potatoes, and a mealy type of potato, which are these Idaho's, and to some degree these fingerling potatoes. So grab your peelers and get ready to cook some potatoes right here on Play With Your Food. So we're going to start out by making uh, fingerling potato salad. We're also going to make whipped potatoes. And then we're going to finish up with the potato gratin, all with the mealy type of potato. So grab your knives. And all we do with the uh, Rancher's Club for the potato salad is take these guys and cut them into basically bite-sized portions. While you're cutting these, just remember to get your fingers out of the way of the knife so you don't cut your fingers off. You don't have to worry about taking the peel off with these guys because we're going to serve them with the peel. It's very important when you're cutting these that you make sure that if you start out cutting half inch slices or inch slices that you stick with that. Now it doesn't really matter at the end of the day just so long as you can fit it in your mouth. But the reason why we want to keep consistent sizes in between everything is so that they cook at the same rate. Another big concern with potatoes is how we cook them in water. You always want to start out your potatoes in cold water. So we've got a pot here, we've got the fingerlings going in. The next step to getting these fingerlings cooked is to make sure that your water is seasoned. The only time to really get seasoning inside of potato is while it cooks. So we're going to add just a little bit of salt right to the water. Not much for this amount of water, which is about a quart to the potatoes that I added, probably about a teaspoon. Let's move on quickly to the whipped potatoes. I prefer whipped potatoes, and we'll talk about what the difference is over mashed potatoes just because of the texture. And again, starting with an Idaho potato that we've peeled and kept in water until we're ready to use it so that it doesn't turn brown. We like to split these guys in half, and again, keep your fingers out of the way, flip them over to their flat sides, and then just like with the fingerlings, cutting consistent pieces is important for the rate in which they cook. If you've got inconsistent pieces, you're going to have watery potatoes on one side and undercooked potatoes on the other. Nobody likes watery potatoes, nobody likes really chunky potatoes. So again, the same thing. We're going to put these into cold water. We're going to put some salt in and we're going to bring those to a boil. So on goes the burner. Now we've got the fingerlings cooking. You can see how quick this is. The fingerlings are cooking, the Idaho potatoes are cooking. Salted water, ready to go. Now moving on to our potato gratin. This one is real simple. And you'll notice that I've got kind of a restaurant industry container here. This is actually called a, a hotel pan. You can use just about any kind of container that you have at home in terms of casserole dishes. If you've got enamelware, if you've got cast iron, all of those will work the same. This little piece of equipment is going to come in handy for this preparation. It's called a Japanese mandolin. If you don't have one of these, there's plenty of other mandolins uh, on the market. You can go to Williams Sonoma, you can go to any kind of, of uh, department store and pick up some sort of mandolin. But the reason that this is important is because we want to get all the potatoes sliced perfectly the same size so that they cook at the same rate and they also come out to be a nice cake after it's done. So the easiest thing to do, and I've already got some sliced, is to pick a thickness and at the Ranchers Club what we like to do is go about an eighth of an inch thin. And so it's really easy just to grab these guys this recipe really couldn't be any easier. Layer these guys down, and it doesn't have to be, see those spots right there? I didn't catch that before. Those are not so good. So we're going to pull out some other ones. This doesn't have to be completely uniform. You just have to cover the bottom and make sure that you've got a nice even layer. Now between layers is where it becomes important in terms of flavor. You've got to make sure that you get some seasoning between the layers or else you're going to have a potato that just doesn't taste very good. It's just going to taste bland all the way through. So you sprinkle a little bit of salt, and what I'm using is kosher salt like we talked about in the first episode. And then so that the 
potato gratin doesn't have any black specks in it because it's a completely white potato dish, we've got white pepper. So you sprinkle a little bit of white pepper in the potatoes. Then we go back with another layer. And again, you don't have to, you can shingle these and, and take your time and make it a nice pretty shingled effect, but I can promise you that in the end you're not going to be able to tell the difference because you're going to cut a square out of it anyway. The most important things about this particular preparation are getting the seasoning in before you cook it. So after that is done, and we're just going to kind of pretend like this whole thing is full, here's what makes it really delicious, heavy cream. Now if this were full all the way to the top, which is what you'd ideally like to have to have a nice tall cake, just imagine this potatoes all the way to the top. Literally just pour the heavy cream in until there is a thin layer of heavy cream covering the tops of the potatoes. Now these are only half full, but you can see that it's covering just the top. Heavy cream is a lot of fat and a little bit of water, and that's why you need a lot of it. That is done. Literally put some foil on top of it. Have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. Pop this guy in the oven. And you don't have to come back and check on it for at least 50 minutes. We generally let them go right at an hour. Now the easiest way to text, test, I'm sorry, the, the texture of those, uh, we have little cake testers. You can pick those up at the market. You can grab a sharp knife and just poke right through. But that's going to be the easiest way. Just, just poke right through and see if it's tender. All right, let's move on to finishing up some of these applications. Now we started out putting fingerlings into simmering water. And I've got some potatoes that we've cooked that are all the way tender. They've been salted. We're going to go ahead and drain these guys. And as soon as these are drained, here's an important piece of whipped potatoes. Everything needs to be hot. Everything needs to be hot, except for the cold butter that you put in right at the last minute. Now you'll notice that I had my mixing bowl over the stove. I've got this very nice food mill. And if you don't have a food mill at home, this is an expensive one. There are smaller versions. And there's also those hand presses that are uh, very convenient for potatoes. But in any case, everything is nice and warm. The potatoes are steaming. The milk that I'm going to add has been on the back burner there. I'm going to add just a little bit of heat. It needs to be hot. The only thing that we need to do to make sure that we finish it is have nice cold cube butter, which I've got some right out here, which will fold in. So now that they're properly drained, we're going to put them into the food mill and get this out of the way. And we're going to rice them until they're nice and smooth. Get a little help from my spatula. Now, the difference between these whipped potatoes and mashed potatoes like a lot of times I grew up on and a lot of places, uh, a lot of homes that I've visited have, is the texture. This is going to be a much smoother application and I think that you'll be very, very happy with the texture. I live, once I started making whipped potatoes, I just, I don't, I don't care to go back to mashed potatoes just because of the texture. Okay, so now that we've got that all taken care of, those are whipped, ready to go. I've got my hot milk that's been simmering back here. And these already have a little bit of salt because of the water. So I'm going to be very careful about how much milk I add. Just add a little bit. And for two potatoes that I had cooking, what I've added is just about half a cup. I'm going to add whole butter to this. And you've got to remember when you're adding whole butter, that whole butter also has water content. So you don't want to put too much milk in to start. Now the texture looks pretty good for right now. Now again, keep these hot and move quickly. In the restaurant, we have to keep these hot and put them on our hotline to keep them ready for service. This is about a teaspoon and a half so far of cold butter. And I think for this amount of potatoes, that's going to be just fine. So I'm going to get that mixed in and then we're going to set these aside for just one second above the stove and keep them hot so that we can finish the other two. The only thing that I'm going to do prior to putting these on the plate and letting you guys taste them is add just a little bit of salt and white pepper if I need it. 
All right, so now that the cold butter is incorporated, this is just going to sit right up here and stay nice and warm. And we're going to go back to our fingerling potato salad. And again, those will cook, the fingerlings will cook anywhere from about 15 to 20 minutes in salted boiling water. We've got some that have been cooked. Now once they get drained and they're nice and hot, this is where you need to come back and add a little bit of vinegar while they're hot. So you add just a touch of vinegar, and this is probably about five or six potatoes. I'm going to add, oh, about a teaspoon. Don't be frustrated if, if these aren't exact recipes. Again, the reason we're doing this is to learn how to cook and not necessarily follow the recipes. So now that we've got these in a bowl, I'm going to take these over and mix them gently. And the only thing that we add to the potatoes are nice fresh herbs, a good quality olive oil, and you can buy plenty of olive oils at the store. Again, we talked about that. I think I recommended the one from Rachel Ray. So now we've got oil on them. We're going to come back, and I've got some fresh herbs here. Fresh herbs you want to chop right at the last minute, so I've got some parsley. And again, this doesn't have to be anything super special in terms of types of cuts. We just rough chop all of the herbs. You can use basil, you can use parsley, generally soft herbs like that, chives, something like that. I wouldn't say uh, a heavy herb necessarily like rosemary just because of the texture. Okay, now that we've got the herbs in, clean up my cutting boards a little bit here. Okay, and I'm going to go back and add just a little bit of salt. and a little bit, again, of white pepper. And this gets kind of mixed around, and we're just going to hold on to this for one second. I'll put this right up top. Now, we've got to finish the gratin. Now, obviously, that hasn't been in there for 50 minutes, but we've started one. So we're going to pull this guy out and take a look-see at it, see how close we are. That looks delicious. It's nice and golden brown. And you can see don't be afraid if you see these lines of clear liquid. That's just the fat from the heavy cream coming out, and that's just perfectly fine. Now, the only thing that we do to finish this in the restaurant is add some good quality blue cheese. So we're going to put a big piece of Roquefort on the top of these guys, which is a sheep's milk blue cheese from France. It adds some more saltiness to the dish, and it certainly adds that beautiful cheese flavor. So make sure you got a towel when you're handling this stuff. This is going to go back in the oven. We're going to let that melt down, and I'm going to plate those other two potatoes for you. Coming back, now we've got the whipped potatoes that are ready to go. Got nice warm plates that have been sitting on top of the stove. Now remember I said we have to go back and just double check and make sure that these taste good. So it's always nice to have some tasting spoons around. What you're just basically checking for is to make sure that there's enough seasoning, and there is. So I'm not going to worry about adding any more seasoning to that. All of these potatoes can be interchanged with just about any meat that you serve at home. If you want to serve these with steaks, that's fine. If you like to serve them with pork, that's fine. Probably the only thing that I haven't served them with is kind of fish items, and I don't think many people eat them with fish items anyway. That's easy. Now the potato salad. And again, you just want to reach in here, since you're at home. Excuse me, sounds like I got a frog in my throat. Taste a piece and just make sure that it's got enough seasoning. They're nice and tender. They've got a little bit of acid from the vinegar. They've got nice fresh flavors from the parsley. They've got a little bit of oil on the outside to make it kind of satiating, and you're done. That's simple. This is great served chilled or at room temperature and great for picnics and things. And then the last one is this really nice, straightforward, but very luscious potato gratin. I'm just going to plate one of these guys because they're super hot. And you can let your cheese melt a little bit more if you like, but you don't want to let it melt too much because then it'll just separate and you'll have nothing but fat dripping off of the, the plate. All right, so there you have it. Three potato preparations that you can do at home that are very simple, very straightforward, 
Uh, good for your family. I'm sure they'll be happy if you try these, and, and they're just so easy to do. So make sure you join us next week on Play With Your Food when we start talking about rice.